The recent heat wave in the Northern Cape has raised concerns about the impact of climate change in South Africa. The South African Weather Service has issued a heat wave warning as several provinces have been experiencing temperatures as high as 40 degrees Celsius. According to the World Health Organization, heat wave is among the most deadly natural disasters. To talk to us a little bit more about the state of climate change in South Africa and how it impacts our lives, we are now joined in studio by uh, Caetano Dube, who is a professor of research, innovation and commercialization at the Faculty of Human Sciences at the Waal University of Technology. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Ndore, and your viewers at home. All right, let's start in the Northern Cape, Kakamas, heat strokes. Um, what do we know about the temperatures and the trend that we've been seeing over time? Okay, so, so if you look at Northern Cape, it's one of the um, areas that, that is actually affected by an increase in, 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 in temperatures. You look at Uppington, I was just looking at the temperature regimes in that particular area. Not very far from that, that place is an agricultural community just by the Orange River. And from, I think, our assessment that we have done with a group from the University of South Africa, we have picked up that temperature has been on the increase. And particularly in, in Northern Cape, you have got mm -hmm. uh, that place is ordinarily hot. But I think we are seeing that the temperature as a result of uh, global carbon, uh, the increase in global carbon emissions, we are also seeing an increase in temperature regimes uh, in most of these areas that ordinarily were hot, but becoming hotter. Um, this is unexpected, really, because this is a La Nina area where we're expecting a bit of moderated temperatures. But if you look at a number of areas, we are picking up that uh, a lot of people are suffering as a result yeah. of uh, these heat strains. And they are quite severe. They affect uh, the sleeping patterns. I've been, mm. during the time that I was in Northern Cape, uh, you would get into a room, you get into a hotel room, and the room feels like you're moving into a heater. So this, 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 this becomes problematic. You struggle to sleep. And in terms of productivity from the research that we are conducting, we are realizing that a lot of people, particularly those that work outdoors, they find it problematic for them to actually perform at their uh, maximum uh, uh, performance as a result of those increase in temperature. I, I like to look at trends over time because uh, sometimes we get stuck in the now and uh, it can be explained. Uh, over a period of time. Yeah. If you've lived as long as I have, you've seen heat waves that have come and then it cools down for a few years, then another heat wave comes. Are we going through that or is there something that you're seeing over a longer period of time that suggests that for sure climate change is responsible to what, for what we're seeing? So, so we have got two issues. We have got climate variability, mm -hmm. which, which talks to the issue of La Nina. And, and ordinarily we would know that you have got um, El Nino, then you would have ordinarily uh, higher temperatures. Mm -hmm. But according to the recent report by WMO, it is quite clear uh, 2022, even though it was a La Nina year, it tops the top five warmest years on record. And you also see that we had a reduction, a lull in reduction in terms of carbon emissions uh, during the, at the height of COVID-19. But we are seeing that those carbon emissions are increasing. And also, so is the reports of people that are also struggling as a result of heat wave. So what we're seeing in uh, the Northern Cape, is this something that we're likely to see more and more of in the future, that people are literally going to have heat strokes in an increasing number. It, indeed. Um, uh, so I was just looking at the temperature at Kakomo's um, just before I came into the studio. You'd actually see that um, if you look at the, the temperature regime, you'd realize that there is a severe movement concentration of temperatures around 38 degrees Celsius. So if you look at daily temperatures, there are days where you actually realize that you have got 45 degrees uh, Celsius. But we have had these incidents, particularly also in, in, in the northern parts of KwaZulu-Natal. And when we were conducting a research there with one of my master's students, we actually picked up that um, and at one of the private game reserves there, beds were actually falling as 
as a result of it. So it's not only human beings that we are concerned about. Uh, we also concerned about the the, the animals, uh, uh, mm. which which are part of our rich heritage and that gives us a lot of tourism and um, uh, in terms of GDP and in all the national parks I think that we have uh, been moving we picked up that they have actually changed the working schedules particularly when it is hot so people tend to work in the earlier hours and they break uh, at the in the afternoon so that they can actually give some cooling down effect. So, so that, that is one thing that we anticipate that we are going to have a loss in terms of the time that we actually spend working. And also the mind does not become as productive when it is what uh, we become exhausted and all those kind of things. So it is indeed a problem that we are going to see increasing over time. Yeah, you've answered some of uh, uh, my next question is uh, to try and unpack the social impact of what we're seeing and I think you've already talked about productivity. Um, what else are we going to see uh, in society as a result of these uh, um, disruptions caused by temperature? Okay, so, so closely linked to temperature is also the spread of various diseases. So you'd, you'd know that um, from the studies that we are conducting, we are aware that in certain diseases that we're not occurring in other areas because of these shifts and changes in, in climatic areas. Um, I, I think at one point I was reading an increase in malaria incidence in Gauteng. This is an area that if I'm in the tourism business, uh, would not issue warning for, for malaria for a person that is traveling to Gauteng. But we are seeing an increase uh, in the spread of those particular diseases. But also, when, we, when, when the temperature goes on the increase, it has got a spiraling effect on the entire climate system. So it alters the entire climate system. And there goes, you have a lot of droughts, for example. Um, as a result, you have got extreme rainfall events. And the, the health impact of that is actually quite documented um, uh, in terms of uh, what, so from disease uh, to also malnutrition. So if you've got a number of um, uh, extremely uh, hot droughts, uh, mm. you have got challenges in terms of water availability, that which we need in terms of cooling our bodies and also in terms of animals. So you were talking about uh, the impact of an economy. Looking at uh, South African National Park, the studies that we have done in all the national parks, we actually pick up that animals are rare to see when, when it is very hot, so they also go and hide. Mm. And that have got impact on tourist experience in terms of our li wildlife and safari, which is our mm. trump card when it comes to tourism. So what kind of policy interventions are required now that we know what the problem is and where it's likely going? So, so the, the policy interventions and the practical interventions and the meaning to the ordinary person, uh, it varies from society, from, from various sectors of the society. So in, in terms of engineering, we might need uh, more uh, energy efficient buildings so that we are able to also cool um, uh, without a, having a negative impact also in terms of the air, energy electricity. But we also would want to, to see uh, a lot of interventions in terms of us cutting back on te in terms of all the carbon emissions, the activities that actually contribute to uh, the carbon emissions, which have got impact on 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 uh, on global warming. So as long as the carbon emissions is increasing, uh, then we are likely to experience this. So we need to cut on carbon emissions so that at least we can see a lull or some reprieve in terms of our climate regimes. But that will take a bit of time. Yeah. Professor do we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. Uh, thanks so much for unpacking some of this for us, and uh, let's hope that we do find uh, those solutions and run with them uh, uh, urgently. But thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ndoro, and your viewers. Thank you.